Hey guys, it's me, Zombly, back with more Strike Fighters 2, and we're in it for the money. Some blood money. Um, I could have done a better opening, I'm sure. <laughs> um, well, I'm sure you all saw the last video. It was only a matter of time, uh, especially uh, driving the Saber, which uh, I'm told is extremely outdated for what it was. I thought it would be a little bit outdated in comparison, but uh, then we had uh, Moku and Miraz uh, both pointed out to me, and they are very correct, that the period between the 50s and the 60s for the United States and any nation, for that matter, it, just in terms of the jet age, was extremely expansive. Um, from the late 50s through all the way to the late 60s, we saw mass improvements over jet uh, airplanes and production and fighter planes and bombers and even civilian aviation. And so I went back through and read up on my history a little bit more and uh, yeah. So the Sabre was incredibly outdated for what I was attempting to do. Excuse the sniffles. Um, I just had to chug a whole bunch of coffee because uh, I realized I've gotten to the point now with my coffee. I've made it like this habit that like I get up and I make a cup of coffee and I drink it. And, you know, whatever. Kind of plan out my day and everything else, try to go about it. It's cool, you know, that's fine. But then I realized that um, that's creating like a caffeine dependency. So now um, it's, I've had to do a little bit of extra stuff today before I could get to recording, and now I realize that um, I've given myself a headache from lack of uh, caffeine. But anyway, um, going back to what Moku and Miraz117 commented on my uh, first two videos, I haven't uploaded the third yet, um, but by the time this one goes up, it will be up, and you'll know what has happened to me. So, not spoilers, um, I died a terrible death because I was flying an incredibly outdated plane. It's my favoriteest plane in the entire world, but it was, you know, whatever. Just because it's my favorite plane doesn't mean anything. It's my absolute favorite plane when it comes to jet fighters. Uh, this guy, though, is not going to be who we are. Uh, now there's this, so uh, he's dead. So we need to go ahead and get rid of him, as is he. Uh, this is just my test pilot. So we need to create a new pilot. And uh, anyway, we're going to go back into mercenary mode. Um... Yeah, Lee. Uh, first name is going to be. Uh, you, you know what? Let's let's go back to using Slushy. We'll go Slushy Callahan actually, from the first. He, he's back from the dead. Slushy Callahan, your call sign. We will leave blank because technically my first name will be my call sign in mercenary mode. Um, I wish I had a cooler picture. I'm still trying to figure out how to edit pictures. I can upload some goofy stuff if I could figure it out. But anyway, uh, so there's Slushy Callahan. Good to go. So we'll make him. He's going to be our new pilot for our new campaign. But uh, going back to what they said, um, I went ahead and looked at all my options for fighters in this particular era, especially ones that would be available to a mercenary squadron. More specifically, a mercenary squadron that's pretty much backed by the UN. Um, because based on what's going on with the Empire of Paran and the Kingdom of Daimar, with uh, the Kingdom of Daimar being backed by the U.S. And, and therefore also the United Nations, which is more so the United Nations than the U.S., the U.S. just happens to be a part of that. Anyway, um, I think we would be in favor to have some, some better planes than just an old outdated saber. And so I think Miraz and... Well, I think even Moku agreed with it or suggested it. But we're going to go ahead and start a new one. Um, let's see, 75. It's Rattlesnake. 68. Yeah, we'll go 68. We will be mercenaries. We will not be flying the F-4C Phantoms. We're going to fly a special plane that they suggested. Um, we're going to be flying for the Kingdom of Daimar. We are going to fly the Mirage 3C. That's right. And we're going to fly it in generic silver, I suppose. We're not going to be the French Ama de la Air, and I probably butchered that extremely bad, so you have my apologies. We are still, however, going to be the Green Scorpion, sorry, <laughs> I always do that, Green Mercenary Squadron, which is more fitting, honestly, so the Green Scorpion Mercenary Squadron, I think I spelled that right, yeah, that's somewhere in there, of course we're going to fly as Mercs. Unit markings none. We are mercenaries in generic silver with Mirage 3C in 1968. 
and we're going to be flying for the Kingdom of Daimar. So, um, also a big shout out to uh, Dave, I believe it was, on the Combat Ace forums. He went and he bought me this DLC because I was trying to use a downloadable content, like a free mod Mirage 3, and I was trying to substitute in a different cockpit because I didn't own the proper add-on. So I was trying to use assets from the games that I already owned. Uh, so I'm, that way I wasn't stealing anything, and it just it wasn't playing out. So he went ahead and he went and bought me a copy. So that was incredibly kind of him. Big shout out to the people at the Combat Ace forums. Uh, you can get some exceptional mods for Strike Fighters 2 there. Anyway, I think I've rattled on long enough. So again, despite the UN ceased back or back. Ceasefire, Emperor of Paran continues to support terrorists engaged in guerrilla warfare against Kingdom of Daimar. In response to repeated guerrilla attacks, Daimari aircraft violates Parani airspace and destroy terrorist camps just across the border. Paran retaliates with intense artillery fire against Daimari positions. The exchange escalates into a full-scale war, and the U.S. once again deploys units to defend the kingdom. The Green Scorpion Mercenary Squadron is formed by Prince Fahad of Daimar to take part in this operation. So we're working in cahoots with... Uh, the uh, Kingdom of Daimar and the United States, who is backing up the uh, uh, the Daimar Kingdom here to fight against the Soviet-backed uh, Pirani Kingdom or Empire. So yeah, a lot of back and forth. It's August 1st, 1968. We're on D9 airfield, and our first mission is going to be to provide combat air patrol over Naja Hafi, prevent enemy aircraft from approaching the vicinity. We are going to be the call sign of Gophers. So let's go ahead and take a look at our roster. There's the beautiful Mirage 3, and the more I fly this plane, the more I really like it. I think it's become one of my favorite combat uh, planes now, uh, right up there with the Sabre and the A10 and all kinds of awesome ones that I can't think of right off the moment. Okay, so I'm 2nd Lieutenant Slushy Callahan. We have Major Hal Rogers, Captain Kit Golden, Captain Hub Blackwood, Stub Reigns. I don't want to know how Stub got his nickname. Uh, we have Tub Arling. I think Tub's probably a heavier set gentleman. That's fine. We have Frank Reigns, Tim Kuhn, another Stub. Stub Callahan? Whoa, not related. Uh, slightly different spelling. That's really interesting. Um, Johnny Blackwood, so we've got another Blackwood, so Hub and Johnny are probably related. The Blackwood brothers. We've got Buck Schmidt, Jet Medina, Kyle Mott, Screwy Boyington, Laddie Bard, and Sonny Thompson. Screwy sounds like he's probably a fun guy. Um, I don't know. But the stubs worry me. Stub Reigns and Stub Callahan. Uh, Okay, well, let's see what we've got going here first before I choose anybody else. I'm not going up by myself. I'm not that confident just yet. So it is just a very short intercept. Um, extremely short. What are we looking at? Our supply is 46%. Second Dimar Tank Division. We're going to be supporting... So we're just doing a combat air patrol. So we won't need drop tanks. That's good to know. So I'm going to go ahead and take uh, four guys, I think. So who's going to be my wingman? I would like a uh, somewhat experienced and skilled guy. So it looks like Tub is going to come with me as my second. Um, and then who's going to be in charge? We need another really experienced guy to be in charge of the second flight. Um, I think Stub Reigns is going to be uh, the second group's leader. And then we're going to send a not-so-experienced guy up there. Uh, who's got our lowest experience? Oh, it looks like it might be Sunny. So Sunny's going to be number four in the group. That's good to go. So let's go ahead and go load out, and uh, let's take um, some AIM-9Es. Now these are upgraded versions of the Bs, and they will fly and work much better. We can also take the uh, Matra R530, which is the French answer to the Sidewinder. Uh, we can take one of those. So we have three missiles in total. Uh, fuel, we don't really need that much, so I'm going to try to keep us a little light on fuel. Uh, also, I'm going to go 77, because that feels like a lucky number to me. Let's go for 1-1, one, one. so what are we spending here? 350 and 430. They are more expensive than the AIM-9Bs, for a reason. That's because they actually fucking work. Um, so we don't need drop tanks, so then we'll give them a Matra as well. Might be a little overkill on the missiles, but if we don't use them, I guess we can bring them back. I don't think uh, we get our money back for that though, and we're spending a lot of money, so I might not might not go with the uh, the Matra missiles there. I think that might be overkill. So we'll see how these AIM 9Es work. I can almost guarantee that they're a lot better than the uh, uh, than the 
uh, AIM-9Bs I was using. I can almost guarantee it. Okay, so let's go for 1-1. One, one. So we're all loaded up. So finally, after a bunch of blither blather, we can fly. And hopefully, this plane will increase my survivability enough that uh, I can actually uh, keep going without having to make new pilots. But August 1st, 1968, uh, currently the United States is also embroiled in the Vietnam conflict. So it, it makes sense that mercenaries would be helping out. Probably not something the UN or the US would really admit to or be proud of, but here we are, the Green Scorpions, and we're here to kick some ass and earn some of that money, because that's the only way we make money, is by shooting people down. So let's go do that, and I'll be back when we're up in the air. Alright, here we are in the cockpit. I'm going to go ahead and set my navigation lights on. The Mirage 3, in my opinion, is a beautiful looking fighter. It's pretty wicked looking, honestly. Let's go ahead and take an outside look at it. Number 77 there with the big old green scorpion logo there, proudly displaying the fact that we're mercenaries. We've got our two AIM-9Es set up on the rails. So we should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and drop those brakes off, and you'll notice it has an afterburner, which is incredibly nice, but more so than that, let's go ahead and pop on the radar. Yes, it's actually got air-to-air -air radar. Actually, uh... Yeah, it's only got Boresight and Surge Mode. It doesn't have Ground Radar, but that's okay. Go ahead. Now that we're lifted off, we'll go ahead and pop that afterburner down, get those gear up. It doesn't have flaps. There are no wing flaps. It's basically a flying triangle, but it's a cool-looking flying triangle, in my opinion. Look at that delta shape. It's just a neat-looking plane. And I believe the first one flew in 57, which, uh, also, I'm really pleased with the weather we have right now. This is going to be some great weather we'll actually be able to see what we're looking at. Okay, so... Radar has us on their scope. And my second, my wingman, is airborne, so that's good. But anyway, as I was saying, the Mirage was produced right around the same time as the Sabre, and it's much more advanced in my opinion. Not only does it have a radar ranging gun sight, just like the Sabre, but it's actually got radar scopes, which I don't believe the Sabre had. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure later iterations of the Saber did. As far as I know, the Saber flew all the way into the 80s uh, with the uh, Japanese Self-Defense Air Force. Um, so they flew Sabres. And I'm sure... I mean, the Saber was amazing for what it fought against with the MiG-15 and everything else. It, uh, it kicked some butt. But anyway... Um, so my wingmen... I can hear their afterburners. I don't see them just yet. But I can hear them. So they're afterburnering just to catch up with me. We should be good for fuel. There's number four, the last of them there. Let's go ahead and take a look here. See where my fuel is. It's temperature, yada, yada, yada. I believe those numbers ticking down are my fuel. Um, so I've got 1,824, I'm assuming pounds, because aviation usually uses pounds. Gun sights back. Okay, so my views are all set up. Anyway, it's going to be a boring flight across the desert until we can hit our uh, waypoints here. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and do that, and I will be back when the shit hits the fan, so I'll see you guys in a little while. Zoom. Okay, so I think we're in formation. I, we are. Uh, we're up here pretty high, too, man. We're, uh, we've got a good altitude advantage. Um... Still no sight of the enemy, but uh, we should be setting up pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and talk to Redcar. Oh, actually, never mind. Apparently we sighted a bomber, so let's go ahead and Flight 1, you guys go ahead and engage that air. Go for it. They're going to break straight across the top of each other. A little sloppy looking. Come on, guys. Fly like mercenaries. All right, wingman. I need you to go ahead and attack my target as well. I'm going to get ready to... Uh-oh, we got MiGs. No bueno. Well, I'm sending my wingman after the bomber. Let's see if we can... Oh! I think there was a head-on collision. I think we lost Mirage. Hopefully the, our Merc was able to punch out. Let's see if we can get ourselves another MiG over here. Going after burner on him. That's fine. I mean, not really. It uses up a lot of ammo. Let's go ahead and switch to our Sidewinders should be able to get a lock. I'm going to switch to boresight mode as well. It should help. Let's pop that afterburner off. Make sure we're watching our mirrors here. I'm going to kind of loop around unnecessarily just to make sure nobody's sliding in behind my tail. In fact, I'm going to tell my wingman to cover me. There we 
go. We got a lock with the Sidewinder. Off she goes, off the rails. Looks like she's tracking good. She's going to lead in front of the guy. Looks like I'm coming up right behind him. That should hit him. There it is. Blammo, got myself a missile kill. First air-to-air -air kill. There he goes. Sheared his wing right off. Looks like he's already punched out. Okay, let's go ahead and hit ourselves. Oh, there's a, uh, there's a bomber for us. So I'm going to dive in on this bomber. And I'm not going to get close to his tail. I would love... Well, this guy might be going down, actually. Pull out of this dive here, see if I can't loop back around. Is he going down? No, he's just flying real slow. So let's see if I can turn real hard. I'm gonna shut the sidewinder up for a moment here. Okay, here we go. Blacking myself out. I couldn't imagine trying to pull that many G's. I'm a I'm a tiny guy, but I'd weigh over like three to four hundred pounds just then. And that would not be fun. Alright, so missile locked him up. Off it goes. Off the rail. I don't think it locked. Nope. Son of a bitch. That one didn't lock, so now I'm going to have to try a dumb move here. Let's see if I can't get this bomber real quick. Nope. No dice. Okay. I don't want to get shot by his tail gun. Wingman. Attack my target. I'm a pansy. I'm chickening out. We completed our mission, but it looks like those bombers may have already wreaked some havoc on the uh, ground forces down there. Oh well, it's not our problem. We were told to shoot down the bombers, and that's exactly what we did. We already completed our mission, so... Alright, let's see if I can loop around on this guy and get him from above where he can't hit me. That would be stellar. That would be really stellar. Come on, lock up. I'm gonna try to shoot him without a lock. Okay. Sorry, my gun jammed. I hit him, though. Oh, yeah! I hit him. That was really a spray and pray technique, but that's because I dropped in on his six, and I was in a lot of danger just then. So there he goes, straight into a farmer's field. Sorry, buddy. But you're not going to drop bombs on us. Okay, um, two? Okay, so I'm telling the second squadron to attack this guy. I had a gun jam when I was just spraying ammo at that other guy willy-nilly. I just was really afraid I was going to get shot down again. Bombers are like the, the death of me. I cannot intercept bombers for the life of me right now. Okay, anyway. Let's take a look at our fuel level real quick. How are we looking? We're doing great. We're doing great for fuel. We've already completed our mission, so right now we're just making bank. We're just kind of up here in a turkey shoot. Just kind of having fun. So I'm sending a bunch of my guys after this bomber. I really want to circle around, but at the same time, self-preservation tells me I shouldn't. I do have the altitude advantage of this guy. It's just its really hard in jet fighting for me. Oh, no, it looks like they already got him. Let's, let's take a peek. Hit that F-8 key. Yeah, that guy is having one shitty day. Straight into the sand. He's gonna make a glass patch, watch this. Ah, cliff. Blammo. Alrighty. So if we're lucky... Uh oh, big 19s? That's not lucky. But I will fight them, because they don't have tail guns. <laughs> okay. Wingman, cover me. Flight 1, engage air, if you would. Let's see if I can't dive in on this guy as well. Let's see if we can't fuck up some shit. Pardon the French. <laughs> That's not really French at all. I never understood that saying. How come when Americans curse? I mean, I guess it's funny, you know, because obviously it's not any language whatsoever. But, uh, well, it's language, all right. But, you know. Okay, so anyway, I'll leave that question alone. Um, so we're going to lock him up on the radar range and gun sight. I really hope he doesn't have a friend back there. I don't think he does. So let's see if we can't jump up on this guy and shoot him down real quick. Problem is, is how much ammo did I waste with that other guy, especially because I jammed a cannon. So I've got a cannon right now that don't work. These 
airplanes, I think, have two 30 millimeter cannons? Yeah. So one doesn't work, so I've only got one operational. Oh, you know what? Looks like I'm completely out of ammo. Okay, well, I'm going to stay on this guy's tail, just to F with him, and my wingman's going to attack my target, as is four. Because I think we lost three. I think three immediately had a head-on collision. Let's not overshoot this guy. Please and thank you. But I do want to pressure him. I want him to be scared, thinking that I am trying to maneuver in for a kill. Don't want to use afterburner any more than I have to. Come on, guys, get him. Okay, there's there's a friend of mine. Slipping in right behind him. Looks like he's shooting. Come on, get him. Get him, get him, get him. I distracted him. Okay, four's out of ammo as well. Looks like... I don't think that... 19 got hit. No, that's just regular engine smoke. Those things, uh, they're not environmentally friendly, let's say. Okay, come on. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. So, th I think three's SOL. Figures, I can stay with this guy like it's nothing, but I got no friggin' ammo. Come on, man, shoot him. You're going the wrong way. Let's take this guy out. I mean, there's nothing really stopping us from turning around and going home, except for this guy. Ah, oh, man. I can't believe I'm out of ammo. One time I can get an actual air-to-air -air kill. That looks cool. And I can't do shit. Just my luck. But the minute we turn... Oh, we're firing missiles. I'm going to go ahead and shut the engine off, because I don't want to take a missile up the tailpipe. Got him. That hit. I saw it. Did it explode? Did he evade? That guy should be SOL. I saw it hit. It ripped his shit apart, man. I saw it. You're kidding me, right? This guy's okay. You're, you're telling me this guy's okay. Nah, he's got a spiral in, man. He's gonna lawn dart. Yeah, there he goes. I think he lost some control surfaces or some shit. Yep. Good work. Okay. Oh, man, we got another MiG-21 flying around. Oh, shit, right on my tail. Wingman, uh, please help. As, uh... Yeah, I see that. We need to get the hell out of here. I'm out of ammo completely. I don't know how much my other guys got left. We're also probably low on fuel. Let's switch back to search mode. No sense in having foresight showing me targets I can't shoot. Please kill that guy. I don't know what you're doing, but you need to kill that guy. Please kill him. Thank you. That way. Yes. Good work. I'm going to be the incredibly awesome leader that I am and dive low to the deck and run for home. Because I'm that bitchin'. So let's go to waypoint 8, shall we? Waypoint 8 shows us where we want to be. So we'll just get real low. Great. Four's out of ammo, too, is basically what that means. I'm just gonna buzz some people in some tall buildings here. Excuse me, hello, how are you? Mighty fine looking hairdo today, thank you. <laughs> I couldn't imagine a jet flying that close to my home or something like that. That would shatter windows. I mean, I'm not going supersonic right now. But, uh, that would definitely make some noise. It would probably make you crap yourself. I'm almost certain of it. Okay. So we need to, like, just RTV. Um, everybody, just RTV. Man. Everybody, let's get out of here. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to continue to uh, run, leaving a trail of uh, smoke and piss behind myself, because I'm out of ammo and completely useless in a fight. So I'm just going to uh, skim the uh, tops of the sand dunes here, making, uh, making camels crap themselves. And, uh, yeah, see what happens. If I'm really lucky, I'll get a camo... Uh, a camo... A camel stuck in, like, the... Uh, the, like, vortex behind me, the, uh, the jet wash. Zoom. So, yeah, until then, I will see you guys, hopefully, when I'm landing at base unscathed, unless there's a MiG in my, uh, rearview mirror right now. So, yeah, until then, see you guys later. A little lower on fuel than I would have liked, but I think that's mostly because, uh, I used a lot of afterburners in that engagement with the MiGs there. Um, 
So you can see my buddies aren't behind me, but uh, they did make it out, I believe, and I'm coming up on home base here, so it should be a fairly okay landing, I would hope. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk to Red Crown, see if we can't get our uh, vector to home base. Yep, 12 o'clock at 15 miles, so it should be that kind of like empty looking patch between the uh, the fields over there. Yep, there it is. That is home base, everybody. So we made it. Approach radar contact, cool beans. So let's go ahead and just kill that throttle. And we'll go ahead and fly it in. Um, shut the radar off. No, no sense in using it now. So yeah, as you can see, the uh, Mirage 3 is a very advanced plane. Although it was built in 57, right around the same time as the Sabre, I think. The Sabre might have been a lot earlier in the 50s. But uh, it's certainly increased my survivability, and it is a dream to fly. Um, this is a 599 DLC plane on uh, ThirdWire's homepage at thirdwire.com. I, uh, I didn't actually have the budget at the moment to purchase it, even though it's, it's really cheap in comparison. But... Uh, so once again, a huge shout out to, uh, I think it was Dave at the Combat Ace forums. I'll have to double check that. I'm so sorry if I'm getting your name wrong. Because he went out of his way to get this for me. He's just like, here you go, man. He bought it for me. He's like, Merry Christmas. And all I was trying to do was get a, uh, a freeware one to work. And I was just substituting in, I believe it was the A4 Skyhawk, which I own. Um, I was actually trying to substitute in its cockpit. And I was asking how to mod that and do that. And uh, so he went above and beyond what I ever would have expected. So th this was awesome. It's a it's a great plane. It's definitely one of my favorites now, and uh, it, it's gotten us through a mission. I mean, the Saber got me through a couple of missions as well, but uh, it was hard fought the entire time. This one, um, I felt confident, and uh, we completed our primary objective, which I don't think I ever was able to do. Oops. Okay. Well, apparently, I'm still going a little too fast. Let's go ahead and get some rudder action in on this and slow us down a whole lot. Now we should be able to drop those gears. There they go. Anyway, um, this one, I actually, I had confidence in what I was doing. Um, and it's able to keep up with those 21s and the 19s, which uh, the Sabre was pretty much outflown whenever they first introduced the 15. So, that being said, this Mirage 3 is certainly one of my new favorite fighter planes. It's really fun to fly, and uh, I find it quite enjoyable. Let's go ahead and hopefully gently touch this in. Oh, that might have been a bit of a rough landing. My pilot kind of blinked a bit there. I didn't think I slammed it down on the ground that hard. Well, it's survivable for sure because apparently you can land it like you mean it. <laughs> like, I apparently thought that was a carrier landing, so I just really wanted to make sure I hit the deck. Um, so yeah, excellent plane. That was great. I think we unfortunately lost three. I don't know who three was. I think he was probably one of our extremely experienced guys. But I think he went head-to-head -head with a MiG. Uh, literally head-to-head -head with a MiG. Um, like the, the pilots probably at a, a combined uh, closing rate of about a thousand miles per hour decided to um, try to touch their skulls together and uh, they probably had a really bad day. Oops. Let's retract those. And let's pull in here. Real nice like. Like we're professionals. Because, man, this plane definitely makes me look like I'm a professional. Look how awesome that is. It's a wicked awesome plane. I love it. So we'll just pull off here. I'm lazy. I don't want to taxi all the way into the hard stance. We'll just go ahead and engage those brakes. Shut the engine off. And uh, maybe, if we're lucky, we can uh, pop the canopy. Can we do that? Am I that cool? I'm not that cool. Green Scorpion Mercenary Squadron was to provide combat air patrol over Najahafi. We were to prevent any enemy aircraft from approaching the vicinity. We did that in 25 minutes and 14 seconds. We destroyed four primary targets. Two additional enemy aircraft was destroyed, and one Mirage 3 was lost. Uh, it was a success. The enemy offensive into Najahafi has been repulsed, and we earned $12,000 for this mission. So we now have $20,280 available. We could potentially even buy back that Mirage that we lost. Um, I'm just sad about the uh, the roster here. We'll go ahead and accept. Um, see if we lost him. Maybe we're lucky and he punched out. Let's take a look here. I think he did. 
I think three managed to make it out because I think we took Stub Callahan. We did. So somehow or another, he was. Oh no, no, I lied. It was Stub Reigns that uh, got hit in the face. He had four air-to-air -air kills. He was one step away. So he did die. He did not uh, manage to punch out. So that's unfortunate. We already lost a Merc. So uh, thank you, Stub. Sorry, uh, sorry, I couldn't bring you back home. But everybody else made it back. We earned some good money, so Stubb didn't die in vain. This mission probably won't be the same mission when I come back, but thank you guys very much for joining me for another episode of Il Tu or <laughs> Il Tu Sturmovic. That's right. No, uh, for Strike Fighters 2. Boy, I'm just having one of those days today, I guess. So you'll have to you'll have to forgive me. But anyways, this was Strike Fighters 2 Mercenary Mode Blood Money, a revival of the original Mercenary Mode. So thank you guys for joining me and watching. Um, if you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like. If you didn't, go ahead and leave a dislike. Um, that way I will know for sure. And uh, if you want to help out the channel, you can always click on that support button. It's by no means required. And no matter what, the videos will continue regardless of donations or not. But if you do donate, uh, just know that the money will go to improving the channel and hopefully bringing you guys better, more entertaining co uh, content. Yes, content. Ha! Huh. I know words. Aren't I awesome? Anyways, thank you guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Till then.